Hello and welcome to Pepperdine Esports League of Legends in the Collegiate Star League versus UC Berkeley or Cal Blue. My name is Grace Ramsey, is me Ramsey, and this is my co-caster. Cody. Hi, guys. Yeah, Cody is joining us on stream today after uh, our beloved uh, Kyle Cottiwapple Griffith has moved over to being an assistant coach for the League of Legends team. But... He is not gone forever. We will see him a little bit later to talk about draft, which is exciting. Um, and also someone I should mention in the chat today, you will be seeing one lovely genius Joe. Uh, Joe Hahnemann will be moderating for us today, another one of the Pepperdine Esports employees. So be nice to Joe. <laughs> but yeah, so All right. what do we expect well, from this game today, Cody? Uh, well, first and foremost, hello, everyone. My name is Cody. Like I said, um, I was the, just a little bit of introduction. I was of the course. former AD carry on the League of Legends team, and I decided to step down so that my friend, we will see the second Tyler Kim, will be <laughs> filling in for me against uh, UC Berkeley today. So, uh, yeah. So what to expect in this game? Oh, hold on. Looks like we'll be taking the blue side today. Um, that gives us a priority pick. So I don't know what to expect right now. It's really up in the air. There could be anything. I don't know what the team has prepared, but I'm really excited to see what they have in store for us. Yeah, well, I certainly know after, uh, you know, these first couple of weeks of professional play in the lock-in stage, we've seen a lot of really interesting stuff going on with different picks. A lot of, uh, you know, things that we are, are pretty new to the jungle so far. I mean, I haven't seen Talia in pro play in a long time, and she's kind of dominating on the rift right now. So we might see some Talia play today. I could expect some Nidalee or some Elise, you know, some different picks like that. Of course, of course, and there are a plethora of strategies right now on the Rift. I mean, I really don't know. We could see anything today, and I'm really excited. Um, UC Berkeley is a Diamond 2 average team, I believe. I don't want to offend them. I think that's their ranks. Um, so it'll be a very competitive and very close match, I hope. So uh, we just have to wait and see. Yeah, definitely. And definitely someone to keep in mind will be the uh, new Tyler Kim. We have two players with the same name now on our starting roster uh, playing uh, as the in-game name uh, Sue Yu, if I, if I know that correctly. And uh, there's a little bit of a fun story behind that name, right, Cody? Yeah, actually, Sue Yu is the name of a K-pop star from the k-pop group twice if any of y'all know it um tyler kim too is actually was actually my roommate <laughs> and uh we shared our interest in k-pop together and his name in league is after one of the 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 members of twice so that's fun fact for y'all yeah, there we go. It gives you a little bit of a mindset into everything. And we do have confirmation that we will be using ProDraft today. So we will be able to uh, show that on stream as long as no one uh, you know, makes the link secret from us. So we should be able to get that going here very shortly. It's still being made if what I'm seeing is correct. So... That Let is me correct. make sure that we get everything all up and running. There we go. The link is sent out, but I need to make sure we get the right one here in just a second. There we go. Oh, nice. Okay. Let's get that on stream for everybody. This is what happens when your production team and your casting team are one and the same, but we will be at it soon. So let's see what happens in this draft today. How is everyone in the chat, by the way? It's been a hot second. It's been yeah. a week. I need to pull it up on my... Doing, doing great. 
It's a bit weird. Oh, I should say, as I say every stream, we are operating on the traditional in-client three-minute spectator delay, as well as an additional two-minute spectator delay on the uh, spectator delay on the casters. So uh, if you say something in the chat and we're late responding or something along those lines, it's because there's that two-minute delay just to help ensure that there is no shenanigans with cheating or stream sniping going on. So I just like to say that so everyone knows we're on the up and up with CSL and CLOL regulations. So keep that in mind as we go forward with today's stream. There we go, pulling up the chat so I can say hi to everybody. Just waiting on them to get the pro draft started now. I see Tyler's messaging me on the Lee client. Ooh. I think he's in the stream right now. Tyler, say hello. Oh, wow. So in two minutes, he'll hear you say, say hello. <laughs> but yeah. yeah. Hello, Tyler. New so, Tyler. So since Tyler decided to message some interesting stuff to me on the Lee client, I'll talk more about him. So Tyler, Kim, where to start? I'm pretty sure another interesting fact. I'm pretty sure Tyler or Kim might have gotten COVID in January of oh, no. 2020. He unfortunately laid over in the Wuhan airport oh, on his that's way back to Switzerland. And uh, once he came back, he was hit with this serious fever. And unlucky for me, I was his roommate, so... Yeah, but more fortunate, we will have to come back to this story in a second because ban, pick yes, ban has started, yeah. and we have the All first right. ban going forward for Seraphine for Pepperdine, which can be expected. Pepperdine did ban Seraphine in their previous games last weekend against a UBC right. B. Uh, and Seraphine is a pretty powerful pick in both the support and mid lane right now. Oh, quick bans correct. coming out. And the Graves from UC Berkeley, Graves and Olaf and Elise coming out from Pepperdine. These are all junglers we're seeing right now. These are all high priority junglers. Talia as Talia well. Jungle is getting decimated in this first ban phase. And then, of course, the token Talon, Talon ban, the respect Talon ban from UCB, already earning street cred with the Pepperdine team. That's right. Talon is our mid laner's highest mastery champion, and that's the respect coming out right there. And for Pepperdine, we have the first pick, Nidalee. Um, Nidalee is a strong jungler right now, and... What she's looking to do is power farm and get ahead through CS. And UCB right back with the Pantheon, another high priority pick, is one of the strongest picks right now. It can be flexed mid, top, or jungle. Yeah, or I'd support. expect based on uh, the history of the team on their OP.GGs, we might be seeing that Pantheon mid, but like you said, it can be flexed anywhere. Mm -hmm. And the second pick for UCB... Taking a hot second to select it. Lulu. It will be so the right Lulu. Off, right off the bat, Pepperdine's looking for the Renekton pick. It would synergize really well with Nidalee. Champions that have point and click, very easy CC like Renekton with his W, is perfect setup for Nidalee and is what Pepperdine is likely looking to pick. The Lulu pick is interesting for me. Um, that kind of confirms that Lulu's going support. I feel like she could go mid, but I feel like this yeah, kind of the, limits uh, UCB. Yeah, Iluro, the support player for UCB, does play quite a bit of Lulu, so that's where I expect that pick to go. That's right. And Alistar from Pepperdine is also a strong support pick right now. We've seen him a lot in pro play. Oh, we... A Tristana. Alistar, Tristana. That's interesting. Okay, did not expect that. Um, you know, we well, but you know, we, this is a brand new ADC, right? Brand new for Pepperdine. We're gonna be seeing some things that we don't expect from Pepperdine today. I am very confused right now. I'll have to admit the Tristana pick. Tristana Alistar is a strong lane, but I think Lulu Kaisa is, if not stronger equally as strong lulu and kaisa is a well-known duo pick they they work really well together um alistar tristana is 
very one-dimensional. They want to go in, try to kill them. And Lulu Kaisa, I think after level six, they'll be they'll be perfectly fine. Yeah, definitely. So we have the Orin ban coming out because all we have left for Pepperdine would be their top lane and mid lane picks, unless, of course, that happens to be a Tristana mid, which I don't anticipate. You bring up a very good point, Tristana mid. That's right. It's always something, but I do expect, uh, based on what you said, especially about the strength of a Tristana uh, Alistar bot lane, that that would be a bot Tristana. Mm -hmm. Further tightening up the potential jungle picks for UCB's jungler. I've been paying, I've been playing quite a bit of Lilia. She feels pretty strong right now. Also a good jungler. Orn is a great weak side top side, so. And it's also a champion that Scott defers to when he's playing mm -hmm. weak side, so a good ban. And then the Camille taking away another power pick from Scott here. Notably, like you said, the Renekton is still up and available. It is. And in pro play, whenever I see a Renekton, it somehow always manages to pop off, so that champ might be a little bit broken right now. Yeah, it gave Pepperdine a little bit of trouble last weekend, so maybe Pepperdine will snap it up so that they can do it this weekend. And it looks like it might be an Akali ban. Mm -hmm. What picks are left for the UCB jungler here? Not that much. I'm curious perhaps what a, they could pick. Perhaps a Zack for the additional engage, but they don't really need it. That's an interesting point. Okay, mm. so they do pick up the Renekton. Um, Renekton's a really good addition to their comp right now because they needed a front line. They needed s someone beefy. Pantheon with his E can only tank for, I don't know, one to two seconds. So. Mm -hmm. Oh, and it looks and like the Pepperdine. Shen will be coming out. Mm -hmm. Maybe they wanted them to pick the Renekton so they could fall back to the Shen. Um... Yeah, a global ultimate answering a global ultimate as well in the form of the, the Pantheon versus the Shen. Mm -hmm. So it looks like Pantheon will be headed to the jungle. I can't imagine it would go mid. Though their mid laner does play it. This might be the that Syndra pickup for Santa Masi. He has played Syndra in the past. And it will I have be a the feeling Syndra. UCB is saving their last pick for mid to counter pick Pepperdine. We'll have to see. They have about 20 seconds to cinch it up. Just right off the bat, I really like Pepperdine's comp. It's tried and true. It's what they do. Um, front to back team fight. And we have the Galio coming out from UCB. So that will I be think heading. you're right. That would mid? be the Galio mid with the Pantheon in the jungle. That's right. Who and, knows? Um, Lulu jungle, Pantheon support. <laughs> yeah, you're you're absolutely right. But I'm kind of disappointed that UCB banned out the Camille when they had first pick on red side in the second round because they could have picked up the Camille and the Galio, which would have been a strong duo for UCB. As you know, the combo is Camille ult into Galio ult. It's nearly invincible. It's pretty un unfallible. You can't mess it up, and it's it's a really, really good synergy right there. But Renekton Galio, Pantheon Galio, I'm not quite too sure. But UCB does have two globals. They'll be looking to play off the sidelines with Kaisa that can easily dash into the fights. And... UCB is just looking to, to skirmish all the time, while Pepperdine is looking for those huge team fights that Ooh. they are looking better in. Yeah, and as we transition to showing y'all the official pick bands that are just going to go through like we saw in the pro draft, uh, we can invite assistant coach Kyle Cottywapple Griffith onto the stream. Are you ready, Cody? Yeah. All right, I've just sent him the invite, so he should be joining us shortly to talk with us a little bit about Pepperdine and University of California Berkeley's draft.
think of joining us currently. Hello, hello. Hello. How's it going? Good. How are you today? How do you feel about Pepperdine's draft going into this game? We we really like this draft, actually. We're, we're pretty happy. We went in with a game plan of trying to put their jungler on something that they're less comfortable on. Uh, thus, you can see the early uh, AP jungle bans. And we feel like we accomplished that. We forced uh, the Pantheon to go jungle. We gave up Pantheon knowing it's a strong pick, but with the idea that we would try to force it into jungle. And, and, and we got that. So we're feeling pretty good about this. What are your thoughts, Cody? Yeah, um, I kind of snuck in to your call when you were talking about draft. And one of the things that you were talking about was picking Renekton, and you let that fall through. Can you tell me about that? Yeah, sure. So we. We had considered the Renekton, and we considered banning it, we considered yes. picking it, and there was the option to uh, B3 Renekton and hold Tristana, because we didn't think they were going to ban Tristana, and so we thought about that, but we also just wanted to get our bot lane locked and just not give them the opportunity to, like, you know, if they ban Jin Tristana and we're suddenly floundering, right? We, we, we chose to put priority on that pick over leaving it... Um, to a later, you know, like, we just didn't want to risk the random Tristana ban and have that kind of throw our comp through a loop. Okay, another point of contention is the Tristana pick itself. Can you talk to me about that? Yeah, yeah, no, it's a little off meta. It's not like what you might expect. We have seen a ton of success with Tristana and Scrim, so this is 100% a comfort, like, okay. we want to see if we can just roll with this lane Donovan champion. Um, Alistar Tristana has a ton of go in and get him potential. And so this is definitely a scrim thing that we have seen successful, uh, and we liked it. Uh, we'll, we have other okay. things that are options for us. We've practiced the meta stuff, but this is a good team we're playing into, and we really wanted to come out with something unique and, and test them from the jump. So that was kind of the mindset we went in with it. And I've yeah. got a question for you, uh, Cody. We have a brand new ADC on our roster this week. What can we expect out of Suyu? And especially when it comes to team synergy and working together, we've only had this week with this new ADC. So what can we expect? Yeah, so he is uh, really vocal, um, has really gelled with our supports well, likes talking vision. Uh, we really like that, that he's you know saying like, hey, we need, we need wards here. We need, we need this, we need that. And he's just super aggressive. I mean, I think you'll see it in this game. This Tristana for him is just like, let me just jump on him level two and try to get kills. Um, so really, really aggro uh, from the bot lane. We, you know, not not different than our last AD in that way. Uh, <laughs> but I think he's, it's been a lot of fun. You know, it is new. Uh, we are kind of getting used to having a new player. So there may be communication breakdowns. That's just kind of a, a part of, you know, the growing pains of bringing a new player in. But we've uh, we've been we've been loving having them. So it's it's been good. Awesome. That's very good to hear. <laughs> Anyways, I was kind of worried about the bot lane matchup here because Kaisa Lulu, they can very well deflect some of that engage. Yeah, so I think there's gonna be some onus on us pre six to get a kill or get pressure right before that Lulu ult comes online. Because if Alistar goes in and, and Tristana jumps in and Kaisa just gets Lulu ulted, then we're in kind of a bad way. So getting some early push, getting some priority in the bot lane and, and seeing if we can take over the bot lane from an early start, I think is important for us. Uh, and I think we'll see attempts at that. Um, okay. If it gets into the late game, the Lulu really is just, you know, that utility of making somebody unkillable. We're gonna we're gonna struggle a little bit, but I think we've got confidence in our team to go ahead and get priority early and not let that come online. Yeah, I see. We've drafted comfort picks basically for our team, and I'm really excited to see this. We drafted, like I said um, earlier, a very team fight oriented comp, and while well, they drafted a more side lane and split push comp, and it's just about who can play their game better. And you've talked about before just trying to make them play our game. Could you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, that's 100% what we're going for, right? They want to play Galio, Pantheon, force picks and side lanes, and we don't want to let that happen. So the Shen is super good for us. Um, you know, we, ta we talked a little bit about Galio. They banned Camille, so we didn't think they were going to go Galio because they could have just not banned Camille, banned Renekton, yeah. 
exactly. it's Camille Gallio, and they didn't do that. Um, I think the Gallio has a much harder time without the Camille to set him up, and the Shen just kind of, you know, does what Gallio does, but more in terms of, mm. like, he can go anywhere. The Gallio actually has to show I'm roaming to the bot side to make this happen. Shen can just come in on top of him. So we're yeah. trying to make them play our game. If we can have a strong mid game and force them to come to us as opposed to letting them go and pick us off in side lanes, I think we're going to be in a great spot. Perfect. Yeah, before I see the spectator delay is about to end, but before you go, could you talk me through the, what was it, five jungler bands? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, they they have shown no AD jungle priority, right? So we knew they were going to ban Olaf at the very least and maybe a Graves. And we were like, you know, don't let them have Talia. Don't let them have Elise. Force them to consider playing an AD jungle. And if we take the Seraphine away, which they've shown both bot lane and mid lane, then they don't have a reliable AP mid lane. So that was that was kind of our goal was to make them you know just be on the back foot from the jump uh, and then when they didn't pick an ap jungle early uh we just were like hey lily is a great ap jungler we're just going to take that off the table so that was that Perfect. was what we were looking for yeah thank All you right. very much kyle yeah thank you guys awesome good luck in the game <laughs> appreciate it and we are getting into that now Pepperdine Esports versus California or University of California Berkeley or Cal Blue. Both teams looking like they're starting with a fairly traditional five point. Yeah, we see Lulu is hovering a little on the safer side over there. Playing very safe. Maybe because UCB is afraid of an of a level one invade through that choke point. Um, a little bit of a niddly spear being thrown out there to feel out the... Oh, a back oh. canceled. Niddly cancels the back of Koshin, the jungler for UCB on that Pantheon. That's right. And it looks like a blue start for both junglers. We see the Pepperdine bot lane is looking to cheese, standing in that bush. Yeah. And we're on our way. We'll see if the Kaisa and the Lulu go that way. It looks like they're going to take a fairly safe path around. That's right. I'm expecting Tyler 1, T1, <laughs> and Windshield 400, that's the first Tyler to full clear the jungle. So Nidalee is a very efficient and fast farmer. She'll be able to clear in no time. Uh, Pantheon might be looking to do his three bottom side camps, get red and gank. He will be level three by then and on the map immediately to apply pressure for his lanes and that'll be very strong and it's what, pa it's what Pantheon is looking to do, so. We see Galio is dropping a ward on the Raptors, which is a very, very good ward. It helps spots out the enemy jungler. It tells them when they're on what camp, and he's able to do that because Galio has lane priority. Mm -hmm. in it does look like Pepperdine. Yeah, it does look like Pepperdine was aware of that ward placement. It, the Galio was immediately pinged as missing, with perhaps a little bit of suspicion going that he was laying a ward there in the jungle. And we see Pantheon is actually full clearing this game, which is very interesting. Maybe trying to match the Nidalee, but over time he will get outpaced. But for now, it looks like both junglers are on opposite sides of the map. Um, they will each get one scuttle crab each, and that's that's fine. Yeah, we Tyler do have to pay attention. It looks like the level three is coming out here for the bot lane. Notably, that aggression at level two, we haven't seen quite yet from Suzu, but it looks like they're angling for something here in the bot side jungle. Yeah, we see Tyler. Our Nidalee has elected to go for the Scuttle Crab while Pantheon full cleared and did his Krugs as well. So we see Tyler going back to it. It's all good. Missing pinks coming out from the topside river. 
as they know for a fact that Pantheon will be there. So Scott needs to please play safe right now. He is very... It is very likely that he would get ganked right now. And we see he is A-OK. -okay. Yeah, we do see the Pantheon hovering there. Scott in a little bit of danger, but it looks like the Pantheon is currently deciding to back. We see a little bit of a gold lead opening up. Just about uh, 200 uh, gold coming out here because of the little bit of the CS advantage that the Galio and the Renekton are opening up in their respective lanes. That's right. We see here Tyler is... Our Nidalee has actually gone for the invade into the Pantheon's jungle, stolen away his Grom. He probably knew that Pantheon was top, and because Pantheon wasted his time sitting in that top bush for so long. Oh, that aggression coming out here in the bot lane, the Tristrana okay. hopped onto the Lulu, was polymorphed and exhausted, currently in yeah, a little bit of trouble. Here. But that Kaisa was going a decent for it. trade there. Alistar just getting auto down by the Kaisa, but no kill will go out, but a lot of summoner spells used here in the bot lane. The Lulu exhaust, Lulu flash, and Kaisa heal. Three from the side of Cal Blue. As soon as our bot lane takes it back here, they will be they will be straight chilling. <laughs> yeah, definitely a uh, Mew Blaster and Iluro from Cal Blue will be feeling the heat coming back from Pepperdine's Suyu and Evan Cakes because they will have the summoner spell advantage. Now we see Evan Cakes, our Alistar, has left a nice freeze for our Tristana here. So coming back, if they elect to fight with. Although. Our Tristana does not have the item advantage. If they choose to fight here with the Sumner spell advantage, they should come out ahead. And then it's right in time before level 6. So before Kaisa and Lulu just gained that. Oh, the flash taunt coming oh. out from the Galio gets Syndra in a oh. little bit of trouble, but. The flash heal from literally nice saves Santa Moss. Save. Oh my goodness. That was an excellent play from Winchill 400. That was beautiful. <laughs> so both junglers were mid. They expected it. And a clean save. And Santo can just TP back to the mid lane. He doesn't lose anything. Yeah, except for a bit of CS. Just a smidge there under tower. He currently is about 15 CS down on the Galio. That is true, that is true, but I think Santa is Oh no, is it looks here. like we have had a disconnect come out. Ooh. Looks like Evan Cakes disconnected. How dare. Might be an int from our support. Might have to <laughs> look Probably at that later not. on. It's what happens when everyone is remote. People have different internet quality sometimes, but... So far, uh, how has this game been playing out for the side of Pepperdine, Cody? Well, Nidalee has been up that gromp on Pantheon. She is currently outpacing, outfarming the Pantheon. Uh, she will outscale in the late game, and as Pepperdine likes to go for those late game situ situations, this spells good news for Pepperdine. Definitely, and Evan Cakes is back, fortunately. The cow did not stray far from the rift. That's true, and it looks like bot lane will be approaching level 6 soon, so they might be feeling the pressure to make a play. Yeah, we're, we're not seeing another uh, really aggressive engage quite yet from the side of Pepperdine, which we expected given the summoner spell advantage that they had there in the bot lane, but... And that's fine. Dragon is coming up, so they yeah. will keep this summoner spell advantage. Uh, Tristana still has heal. Evan Cakes, Ignite is coming up, but Lulu's flash exhaust and Kaisa's heal are still down. Yeah, well, which will be critical considering Nidalee is here in the bot side, probably looking towards that early ocean drink. As we see a play is being made on the mid lane. Oh, Syndra Santa here is... in a bit of trouble. 
unfortunately, yeah. gonna die here. Nothing she can do. And first blood going over to the side of Cal Blue, but that aggression is coming out from Pepperdine's bot side. A little bit of an engage going down there. No summoner spells used from the side of Pepperdine. But Kaisa's Kaisa flash burn. And, flash. and immediately we see Tyler or Nidalee starting up the dragon because he has the priority from the bot lane. Galio is moving down though. We'll see Nidalee working on the Drake and will engage on the Nidalee. Tyler in a little bit of trouble here. The TP coming down from the Renekton here. It looks like the Tristana's in a bit of trouble. Uses her ultimate to launch them back and away. And Cal Blue is able to turn that in their favor. Yeah, they had the Pantheon ulti, and he just skyfalled right into the Dragon Pit and picked up the Dragon for Cal Blue. That's got to be a bit frustrating there for Windchill 400, who thought everything was going to be set up for him to take that Dragon, but unfortunately, well, you know, he didn't it's just go that one way. Ocean Dragon, and in all honesty, the the first Dragon, especially being an Ocean, is mm -hmm. really of little importance so they just keep on keep on trucking and moving along and they'll be fine yeah we fully expect for especially this tristana heading into the mid to late game to be able to continue to bully this kaisa lulu in the bot lane so still hope that for more correct. later bot side pressure as i want to talk about wind chills build right now he has a kindle gem a fairy charm in an amplifying tomb. Now I believe he's going into the Moonstone Moonstone Renewer. Mm. It is the AP support item, and it is currently very strong right now. When coupled with the staff flowing water, I've and seen this that. Is, it's very interesting. It's something that LS talked about on Twitter. He said that it's a very strong build going around right now, and it's, I've tested it out personally, and the two items are just insanely strong. Oh, we got a little bit of a scuffle going down here in the top side. Scott versus the Renekton. Coming out fairly even there. Despite the 20 CS advantage that the Renekton has opened up for himself. Scott getting aggressive, taunting the Renekton. The Renekton ultimate goes down. Scott in a little bit of trouble, but the Nidalee is there to cover. Galio ultimate coming down. And overall, just everyone walks away. Yeah, notably though, the only ultimates used were the Galio ultimate and the Renekton ultimate. Pepperdine holds on to theirs. As we see, Nidalee does by the Moonstone. And Moonstone Renewer. And this item is insanely strong, especially on Nidalee. It gives her ability haste, which she wants. It gives her AP. And the mythic passive of five ability haste per legendary item is also strong because those heals will be very, very impactful in those elongated elongated team fights. Agreed, agreed. Definitely an interesting build and a build that we love to see the creativity coming out here from the side of Pepperdine. Yes, it's been talked about before, but taking advantage of those unique opportunities. And I do Sweet notice, Tyler. it seems at some point, the Nidalee uh, Windchill 400 was able to pick up the Rift Herald, but we have another little trade going out here on the top side that comes out slightly in advantage of the Renekton. And we see Nidalee is a, a flash lot and of... teleport out of Galio. Yeah, the flash has to come out from Windchill 400. Scott's in a little bit of trouble here in the top side. Will both it's flashes go down? Well, I did not catch that fight, but... Very interesting. The Renekton did not have ult there, and... Shen did drop, unfortunately, but... About that bot side skirmish, Nidalee was trying to go into the bot side jungle with the bot lane priority, and unfortunately, the Galio TP came through and they were not able to contest the Pantheon's jungle camps. Yeah, DHC, who normally seems to play AD Assassins in the mid lane, is actually having a great amount of map impact here on the Galio. Oh, right it looks now, like the Renekton is a bit caught out here. 
Evan takes using his ultimate. Oh, that's unfortunate that it went kill. over to Alistar. Yeah, Scott also used his ultimate to get into that fight. Probably wanted to see if he could get the kill so he could have a little bit of something against his lane opponent. But the Rift Herald will drop. So those much needed plates will go over to the side of Pepperdine. As they dropped it right before her plating spell, another 30 seconds. Oh, we see Evan Kicks getting into a little to... scuffle with Koshin here in the jungle, head butted away. Yeah, I think they are going to give away this next dragon, which is a cloud. Evan also Kicks another... in trouble here. Suyu is there to cover. That's right, he pops the Alistar ulti and he walks away just fine. First but, turret does go over to Pepperdine, and the Renekton again in here is in a little bit of trouble. Uses his ultimate, is able to get the stun down onto the Nidalee. Nidalee smites to get some health back on the Grom. And they just walk away. They Pepperdine elected to trade the first turret for the second dragon, and these trades are fine. Um... It's just about how each team uses their res respective respective advantages. So Pepperdine with the gold going into the jungler in the top lane will hopefully be able to make something out of it. And Cal Blue with the two dragon lead will look to play for the Cloud Soul. If we do see the completed item on the side of the Tristana, I believe that is, uh, is that Gale Force? That is Gale Force. To Kaisa not having a completed item yet. Just this patch, Gale Force got nerfed. The cooldown went from 60 seconds to 90 seconds, so a very interesting pickup from the Tristana. I personally have, no, have not tested out Gale Force, but I do not know if it's still as strong anymore. We'll have to see. Currently, we have three minutes on the next Drake, another minute for the next Herald, so a little bit of time before the next map objectives come up. That's true, and we see Kaisa's build, the Serrated Dirk, the Noon Quiver, and the Pickaxe are, is the standard right now for Kaisa players, because those three items does give Kaisa her Q Evolve, and Oh, uh, we see a gank coming out here from Scott here in the bot lane. We see Tristana hopping in. The Pantheon ultimate does come down to get him here for this fight. And now Scott and Evan Cakes are in a bit of trouble. Four players from Cal Blue are here. And the double kill will go over to the Pantheon. And another kill will go over onto the Renekton. That is just very unfortunate. The TP came out. The Kai'Sa had all her summoners. Didn't even have to use her ult. Had the Lulu ult, had full faith, and now there's a gold swing of about 1,600 in Cal Blue's favor. Yeah, fortunately there are there's not another map objective like a dragon up for Cal Blue, but we do see the Pantheon moving towards that Herald here up in the top side. And we see Galio is very deep in the red side jungle to place that one control board. Unfortunately for Pepperdine, they cannot do anything about it. And it does look like the Pantheon will start taking that Rift Herald up in the top side. Lulu laying down some vision control. This top tower is very low, Scott farming under tower. The Renekton with two at this. kills and a 60 CS advantage. Yeah, just looking at the CS right now, 165, 155, these are closing up on 10 CS a minute, 9 CS a minute, and we see the Mythics coming out and the first items coming out for Cal Blue, and they're looking very strong right now. They have their one item power spikes, while Pepperdine is looking like they have Build-A-Bear, they just have the components. Yeah, except for, of course, the Nidalee with both the Moonstone Renewer and the Staff of Flowing Water currently. Yes, that combo is very strong right now, and... 
team fight wise, I think Pepperdine still got it. It just all comes down to execution. Mm -hmm. And just how much Cal Blue will be able to prioritize on this nearly 3k gold lead. We see Nidalee's in the bot lane trying to secure this tower. Cal Blue is sending four players down to the bot side right now. Scott's about to get solo killed. And he flashes away and is safe. Kind of the danger of this pantheon of oh, the exhaust coming down with the taunt onto suyu he's running in the opposite Gen direction that he wants to it's very smart galio ultimate time. as well as we see a 5v4 here it's and all suyu about... hops away being chased by the pantheon goes down to the pantheon spear a uh, continued skirmish here in the bot lane evan cakes laying down the cc as only alistar can no one will be got by the galio taunt but and the unfortunately, we have to fall away. And both the Nidalee and the Alistar will go down. That was... Wow. I think over there, we have Santa Masi and the Nidalee fighting. I think it was either Galli or Pantheon in the river, while the Alistar Tristana and Shen were fighting 3v3 against Cal Blue's bot lane and some either the Galio or the Pantheon and the Tristana ends up falling there and it's yeah. looking like a disaster. Part of what was unfortunate there was the fact that the Tristana had to hop away and up and away from the Pepperdine team and got caught out there by the Pantheon. So Nidalee and Syndra there, unable to deal with the Galio in a 2v1 situation in the river, and unfortunately, the Pantheon and Kaisa Lulu were just stronger than the Pepperdine, Shen, Trisana, and Alistar. Very and true, it and it's apart. important to point out, like uh, Pepperdine's assistant coach, Kariwapo, was trying to tell us in the previous game, they spent a lot of their ban priority on Koshin, on the jungler for Cal Blue, forcing him onto this Pantheon when now the Pantheon is 5-0-2, oh, so it doesn't seem like it affected him all that much. You can say that again, and that's very unfortunate. Tyler, this game is not being is not able to farm as well as he had hoped. Now is down CS on the Pantheon and downing. Let's see the gold here. So across the aisle. 13k gold down on this Pantheon. Is Windchill a 3k gold lead just in the top lane. We have Tristana is ahead in gold against her counterpart. But a 1.6k gold lead in the mid lane. And it's, it's rough. We'll have to see if Pepperdine can bring it back. Definitely this next Drake we didn't even talk about. Cal Blue immediately pivoting and getting that Mountain Drake. This next Mountain Drake coming up will give them the Mountain Soul, which, while not necessarily the most impactful Drake, will just make it that much harder to kill the side of Cal Blue in these team fights. With this Mountain Soul, I don't see there's realistically a way for Pepperdine to kill anyone on the side of Cal Blue. There's just too many tools that they have to. Galio a little bit caught first. out here, but two levels up on the mid lane. Oh, Scott coming in here too with his ultimate. And the Galio flash, he is 100% dead here. And the shutdown will go over to Scott's Shen. Beautiful play right there. Well, a lot of resources from our top though, side. From Pepperdine. That is over. true, but there is nothing that Cal Blue can do about it. You're very right. Currently not any objectives worth mentioning. Well, the, the Baron, but they're probably not going to be going for the Baron at this point in the game. That is true. Now we are just waiting for... I don't know, the game plan from Pepperdine might be just to get some items on the Tristana and wait for her to scale up a little bit. 
Yeah, but it's very important that that happens in the next two minutes before this mountain soul goes over to the side of Cal Blue. That is true. I realistically can see Tristana buying a zeal and maybe another dagger out of this back. Oh no, she has 2,000 gold. Okay, that's a full item. <laughs> yeah, the Storm Razor. Storm Razor. Picked up for the Tristana. And the Kaisa looks like she won't be getting her um, collector on this next drag fight, so it looks like Pepperdine will be just relying on Tristana to pull out the damage here. Looks like they were looking for that Galio again on the top side, but he just falls all the way back to his turret and winds up being safe. And of safe. course, with, with Scott walking past the minion wave, there he is. Very obvious that there has to be someone there. A Shen by himself would not be playing so aggressively, so... Very, very interesting. A little fight going on here between Scott and the Galio. Definitely not what Scott wants here at this point, considering the relative strength of the mid laner. And the Pantheon ultimate goes down. Scott manages to avoid the hit with his flash, but it's just Scott mostly stalling for time. Flash, but at what cost? They give it over to the Pantheon, but... 14 Pepperdine. seconds on this Mountain Drake. Pepperdine needs to try to do it very quickly. The TP going down from the Galio. Galio will be here in the spot side fight, and Pantheon and Kaisa are booking it there as quickly as possible. Pepperdine needs to look for picks in this fight. The Galio is a little bit caught out, but Windchill going extremely low. And Tristana going very low. Has to blow her Gale Force and her heal. Use her ultimate. The Zonia is coming out here from the or stopwatch, I should say, from the Galio. Evan Cakes gets the headbutt, knocks people up, but Pepperdine is very, very low. And Pepperdine just has to run for the hills there. I think they should have started the dragon when they had a numbers advantage, and Pantheon had just blown his ultimate. But it looks like they chose to fight there, and this is the soul going to the side of Cal Blue. Yeah, realistically, it doesn't seem like Pepperdine has much of a chance to get back into this game. What would they need to do to pull off this miracle reversal? It's a good question, and I honestly do not know. I think it would be reliant on Cal Blue making mistakes, just getting caught out, picks going down, you know, one by one fights in an ARAM in the mid lane, perhaps. But all in That's all, it true, looks like Cal Blue kind of very got this. unlikely. Yeah. A lot has to be said about the success of Koshin on this Pantheon and Millennium Fox on the Renekton. And of that course the Galio. True. I mean, all of the of the folks from Cal Blue have been able to perform very, very well in this game today. Cal Blue won off of their top side that was strong from the beginning, had that farm lead. But I think credit does have to go to DHC here, has been making a lot of plays for the team, has been allowing, and Santo accidentally burns his stopwatch. But I think a lot of credit does have to go to the Galio, who has been generating a lot of pressure, and it has been at the center of a lot of the plays. Very, very true. I have to agree. All of these solo laners and jungler from... Uh, University of California Berkeley have just been able to have tremendous map pressure and tremendous impact in these team fights and while the Tristana and the Alistar bot lane were able to kind of mitigate some of this advantage that the Kaisa Lulu might have had they now have all the protection they need to do what they need to do in these fights that is true and as we see the bot lane gold lead has slowly withered away and the Tristana and Kaisa are dead even now so, every other counterpart on Cal Blue is just ahead, and this is very worrying for Pepdine. Yeah, a solid 8k gold lead for University of California Berkeley, so we'll have to see. We've heard of Miracles on Ice, but what about Miracles on the Rift as Windchill 400 is a bit caught out here, and it looks like the ultimate is coming down from the Kai'Sa, the Galio ultimate as well, getting into this fight. Evan Cakes is caught out, was taunted and stunned there. Flash is blown all around. We have the stopwatch used by Nidalee, but all in all, 
no one has died. And it looks like Cal Blue is looking towards this Baron. And this is just an uncontested Baron. There's nothing that Pepperdine can do about this. They have no vision, and this Baron will be gone in seconds with the Kai'Sa. Yeah, Unfortunately, they just have to give up inhibitors and wait for a miracle Elder Dragon Seal. I think that's the only realistic way that they can win this game. Yeah, we know Windchill 400 is capable of these Miracle Steals, but that is a lot to be putting on his plate right now, especially considering how he has fallen behind to kind of this overwhelming force of the Pantheon. That is true. Just on the topic of steals, it's probably very unlikely as Nidalee has elected for this support kind of build, rather than going the... Full AP carry build. Damage. Yes, yes. I, I forgot the item for a second. <laughs> but he doesn't have Lich Bane. Um, his mm -hmm. Q Smite will probably deal less damage than the Pantheon's Q Smite with the five stacks. So it's also very unlikely that he does steal this dragon. He's also a level down. But that's what Pepperdine has to hope for right now. Yeah, if anyone can do it, Winchill can. We just gotta. Pray for the temperatures to drop here on the rift. Exactly. We have about two minutes on that Elder Drake. That is the ticking time bomb for the side of Pepperdine. If that goes over to UCB, yeah. then it's kind of all over. They're just stifling the vision in the bot side jungle right now. Pepperdine cannot walk in and they have full control. Elder Dragon's looking like it will go to UC Berkeley. As Pepperdine has to give give both mid and bot inhib turrets with double Baron waves coming in. They're still there to cover. We see a potential hex flash? No. Alistar decides that that might not be the best idea, but this turret in the bot side is falling down fast, like you said. And that vision control in the bot side jungle is kind of all for the side of UCB. Exactly. And both inhibitor turret turrets falls. are. Yeah. Or inhibitors, I should say, not turrets. And with both bot and mid inhibitor falling right before Elder Dragon, it's very unlikely that Pepperdine gets to walk out of their base. It looks like UCB is opting instead of going for the Elder Drake, they're just gonna take this pressure and. Try it to close does. out this game. And they hard focus the Sinjo. She gets bursted immediately. She can Zanya's. The Galio ultimate goes down. Shen ultimate attempting to be used to escape. And Pepperdine and just kind of falls just not taking one damage after right another. now. And it looks like it's over. GG. Game one goes to Cal yeah, Blue. They didn't even need the final Drake to close out this game. Unfortunately, Pepperdine wasn't able to bring it back. Wow. What a game. They just went for the end right there. I, I think they chunked out the Tristana there and she had to go base and Cal Blue saw this as an opportunity to push for the end. And they just had great communication and they were able to do it. Mm hmm definitely. You you hate to see it, but sometimes that just happens sometimes in those games. You can definitely see that Pepperdine has a little bit to work on going forward in the future. Of course, and this game will prove to be a very informative VOD when they rewatch it later. So, only good things. Only good things will come out of this game. Yeah, but we still have another chance in this series. Could pull off the reverse sweep as we go into game two. We're still waiting to get into lobby for that right now, but... Overall, I would like to quickly thank uh, a few people who decided to follow us during the last game. Thank you, Mr. Fuzzy Monkeys, uh, James with a bunch of numbers, and Moy Boy. Thank you for giving us the follow. I also see some questions in the chat. Who's the ADC? If you missed the introduction earlier, Cody, would you like to let people know who took your spot as ADC of the League of Legends team? 
Yeah, the new ADC is Tyler Kim. He is the Tristana player, Zuyu. you? Um, he was my roommate last semester, and he decided to try out for the team on Wednesday, and he is now playing for the Pepperdine team as ADC. Yeah, real quick turnaround there for Zuyu to join the team. Tyler Kim. Now we have two Tyler Kims on the team, which we think is a little bit funny. We have Tyler uh, Tyler Kim and Tyler Kim uh, Prime or Tyler Kim 2. We have Tyler and T2, as they call it. Uh, I, I did not know. I wasn't able to drop into those practices, so I haven't heard. Or as uh, the Discord nickname shows, the OG Tyler Kim as well. Yeah, Tyler has told me he's been pretty salty that his Pepperdine email is Tyler Kim 2. That has been a thorn on his side for a long time. <laughs> yeah, and well. Rightfully so. Yeah, what can be done? What can be done? We all can't have unique names, right? At least it's not John Smith, you know? That's true. Then he could be John Smith number 4,455 or something. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Currently waiting to get into the next lobby. We will be having another pro draft that we'll be able to show y'all today as soon as both teams are ready. But it seems like they're taking a little bit of a moment to regroup after that last game. I definitely think Cal Blue does not have a lot that they need to change. But Pepperdine is probably taking this opportunity to come up with a different game plan going into that next game. And there isn't really much that they can do. This is on the fly. Mm -hmm. They're probably looking to do the same thing, but they just need to focus their in-game execution, I think. There's not a lot they can change now, but I feel like Pepperdine here, they just slowly bled, and then they just lost everything. So I don't know Very what they have true. to do to combat that, but... Ban the Renekton? <laughs> Uh, that definitely was a bit of a problem opening up that early massive CS advantage, especially, uh, well, both solo lanes opened up that massive CS advantage and just made the, the Shen and the Syndra feel weaker throughout that entire game, as well as, you know, a, a normal carry for Pepperdine Windshow 400 going that more supportive build, no matter how OP it is, uh, if the rest of your team is falling behind, you can't really carry from that position. That's true, and I'd just like to point out, I think the Shen might have been a a pick that is not ready for com competition because there's been a lot of disconnect between the Shen and the, and the Nidalee, like the Shen Ton and the Nidalee Spear should have been going hand in hand, but we rarely or we seldom got to see them pull off that combo, mm -hmm. and Pepperdine picked the Shen knowing that, like Kyle said, that Kyle Blue will pick the Renekton, and yet just the way the matchup turned out, it just, he lost, Scott lost so hard in the top lane, it's highly unlikely we see that again. And in the mid lane, mm -hmm. I feel like in the Syndra versus Galio matchup, the Syndra should come out relatively fine. She should be ahead in CS in a range versus melee matchup, but again, with that Pantheon jungle, that's a huge problem. But again, Pepperdine chose to let that through, so a lot of... Yeah, you have to think that perhaps a lot of it was while uh, Tsuyu was able to get a comfort pit, Evan Case was ever able to get a comfort pit, Nidalee was able to get a comfort pit, uh, or Winchell 400 on the Nidalee was able to get a comfort pit. Both Santomasi and Scott were kind of forced into positions that they normally you know aren't comfortable with scott was heavily targeted in the ban phase with both camille and orn going down and then santa Masi, who normally plays ad mid laners was put onto that syndra which we have seen him be successful on in the past but probably is not a pick that was you know a hundred percent comfort ready you bring up a good point in that santo is not that comfortable on the syndra um especially against a Galio, which Santo, I think, feels like nullifies his pressure on the Syndra, is a very lethal pick against him. So just the top and mid, just the solo laners are struggling a bit here, and 
we'll just have to look at the next game to see how they recover. And it's on them to step it up. Yeah. And, you know, they can step it up to a certain extent, but to a certain extent, they also have to rely on not getting their champions banned out in the draft and making sure that, you know, the the rest of the team picks champions that allows them to be successful. It made sense for Pepperdine to need that AP damage in the mid lane, but uh, by the way the, they drafted everything else, but it just didn't work out that way. And so, you know, it's partially on the rest of Pepperdine's team to also allow their solo laners to be able to be successful. So we'll have to and see if... Course- if those That's adjustments right. there's, are made. There's multiple, uh, there's multiple influences that goes into the the outcome and the game that we see. So of course, I mean, mm-hmm. it's 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 just like I don't know. It's a team effort, and we'll just have to see how they adapt. Yeah, and like we said before, there's a whole new element to the team. So a little bit of uh, of grace should be extended as well because uh, while Sue, you can be a rock star, team synergy is not going to manifest in what? Wednesday to today, four days? Three, four days? <laughs> That's so. true. And can, all things considered, they played very well today in game one. And uh, yeah. The item I was thinking of for Nibbly was Night Harvester. Night so had, Harvester. Had Tyler gone for the Night Harvester Lich Bane Zonia's build, he might have been able to carry, but I mean, we'll never know. But Yeah. We can always talk about woulda, coulda, shouldas, but we can only uh, you know, stall so long before finally the team does decide to get into lobby, which should hopefully be sometime in this in this year, 2021. <laughs> of course, but... Can I just point out, who is Greg McConnor in the chat? Does anyone know? Greg is that getting is some a... shout out there. That is a Lego Eiffel Tower in the back. Yeah, Greg is a regular here on the stream. Really? Yeah. And PB Slice. Do we know who that is? Another regular. I don't know people's real names. If you want to drop them, <laughs> let us know. Connect to you yeah. as human beings. For sure. I know Drix It Up is my friend Adrian tuning in. Thank you, thank you. But, uh... Oh, wow. No one invited us to lobby, but they, uh... Oh. Well, there we go. I can take you guys immediately over to the pro draft because no one let us know. But pro draft started. <laughs> Do we have the link? Yes, uh, I will send that to you. So currently, though, to keep you updated on what happened, we have seen Band go out for Graves, Olaf, Talon, and Pantheon to Leah Seraphine with Pep picking up the Kaisa and the Renekton and the UCB, the Nidalee. But let me get that pro draft link to you ASAP. Okay, so just from the sounds of it, again, the jungler heavy bans, but it looks like they are all banning the same champions, and they're picking just the enemy's team comp, if that makes sense. With It looks like Cal Blue going for the Nidalee, and Pepperdine going for Kaisa and Renekton. Is yeah, I case? sent you the, the link in the league client, so hopefully you should get that now. We see the... Miss Fortune and Leona pick going over to the side of UCB with the final red side pick still up in the air for Pepperdine at this time. Okay, I see. And now what Kyle said makes a lot of sense because of the Graves and Olaf ban. UCB does not tend to go for those 80 junglers. And here Pepperdine bans the Pantheon and Talia singling out Talia as the sole threat in the pool of AP junglers that UCB can play. And of course the Pantheon has to be banned for its high priority and the good showing last game. And of course the Seraphine. Yeah. It's something important to point out so far. Pepperdine has chosen the route of that worked for them. Let's see if it'll work for us. Picking out Kaisa, Renekton and Galio three of the five picks UCB used in the last game. Indeed, that's a very interesting strategy. If we can get Kyle on the call after the game or after this draft, 
he might offer us some insight into this draft phase. Yeah, definitely. We'll have to see if we can do that. I would expect that we can. So the Kiana and the Zed bands coming out from Pepperdine looks to target the UCB mid laner, of course, known for its 80 assassins that Santo feels like would be a problem for Galio. We see Nautilus and Lee Sin bands coming out. I am worried about this Galio pick because um, I don't know if Santo has practiced. Oh, the Yone comes out, so this Galio might go for support, and it's Yone in the mid lane. It's very interesting. See how UCB reacts to this. That'll certainly be interesting. Forgive me as I'm getting uh, the overlay ready for the next game. Of course, of course. See, the Mordekaiser are coming out as a response to the Renekton. I don't play top lane, so I don't know this matchup. Mm -hmm. um, Misfortune Leona is a tried and true combo. Very lethal. Kaisa will have to go cleanse in this situation. Yeah, notably Pepperdine leaving that support pick for last. <laughs> oh, no, it's a Galio support. Oh, Galio support. Oh, I've yeah. completely spaced on that. I like what Pepperdine is doing, though. They're saving the jungle pick for last, hoping yes, to give yes. Tyler a winning jungle matchup after seeing UCB's entire comp. So now it's up to him to see what he can pull out to carry this game, to make it a game three. Yeah, we'll have to see. Waiting with bated breath here. And real quick, the Silas pick coming out from UCB is... It's interesting, maybe, to pick it for the Galio, but there's not that many ults that he can steal, and the Udyr oh, uh, coming out from Pepperdine, is that's that, what I like to see. Is that real? Is that a mistake? Or is I that a thing? Not, because Udyr is a pick that is... <laughs> I'm just really hyped right now. Yeah, I, I am asking if uh, Cotty wants to come on stream and tell us about that Udir, uh, Udir pick. Wow. Udir is a very good jungler right now. I have played it in my solo queue games, which is not a good example, but he's been... He just synergizes really well with the items right now, and I can't wait to see... Winchill 400's Udyr pick. Oh, nice. And we got some answers over who some of these interesting individuals are in the chat. We've got Friends of Santo. we got alumni. Thank you so much for the support, our lovely alumni. And then we've got some people having a really, really fun time with the Yone pick coming out here. Yone or what have you. Yeah. As I don't know, can we get? Hold on. Yeah, we're waiting because they uh, currently the lobby is apparently bugged. That is the main problem we are having here. Can we get Kyle here in the meantime? Yeah, he wants to stay with the team until they are getting into game. So we okay. will have to wait until they officially get draft going in the actual client so I, i'm asking him to give me the update on the potentially glitched lobby situation oh i got an invite to the lobby maybe it is no longer glitched let me head over to spectate there same here perfect beautiful as we see liquid core jj or andy being put into the game this time subbed in Evan for is, Evan cakes that's right and I've I think the synergy between Zuyu and Andy is just better here because they've played games together before and it was actually Andy who suggested that Tyler come onto the team and try out oh that's awesome so really looking forward to their combo Galio and Kaisa I know Andy is a big proponent to the Galio pick and I'm honestly stoked to see him pull it out. 
Yeah, some good points being brought out here in the chat about the Udir Phoenix buffs and such. I, I doubt it. I doubt it. I'm sorry. It, it, it's my fault. I should never doubt the beauty of the Udir pick. The Udir, I mean, look, this could make or break the game, and hopefully it might give us the dub. If anyone can make it work, Windchill 400 can. We need to the believe. Udyr, there's a there's a plethora of builds. You can go the Tiger Stance AD build with Trinity Force. You can go Phoenix Stance with Nasher's Tooth and Rift Maker. Or you can go the Tank build with Conqueror and Sunfire Cape or Iceborne Gauntlet or the Chem or the Chem Tank Ultimatum or something like that. Like yeah. Or that item, but many options. He can honestly go anything here, and very exciting. Yeah, definitely. I'll be eager to talk to Cody about that and see what the plan is, or you know, what what oh, of course, hints we like can to, get to the plan. I just like to point out, Windchill is most likely going Phoenix stance into an AP build or a tank build because his mid top mm. are both AD. So makes sense. Makes sense. Not like to control his team by going into AD. Yeah, I do uh, have, have to agree. We have AP damage coming out from Kaisa and Udir, a little bit out of Galio. I'd love to see the Nasher's Tooth from Kaisa this game. That would be very helpful in the damage distribution. Yeah, and we do get to welcome at this point Kyle Kadiwampo Griffith. Hello, Welcome hello. back. Again, new assistant coach for Pepperdine Esports coming back onto the stream. Welcome. Let me make sure. Adjusting zoom on the fly. There we go. What a draft. What a draft. Yeah, a little bit of a change up from last game. I mean, do you want to just go out and say it? Address the elephant in the room? What's the elephant in the room? I, I don't I don't think there's a tiger or a phoenix or, or a turtle in the <laughs> Any room. Any animal. No animal. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so once again, this is something we have pulled out in scrims, and we liked it. And, uh, you know, we were kind of surprised by the Mordekaiser pick. Um, you know, Mordekaiser, they already had in Italy. We didn't think Mordekaiser was something that they were going to want to pull out. Uh, they didn't really need the Yeah, AP. more Nidalee, Silas, a lot of... Um, a lot of yeah. AP. Windchill just said, hey, pick me Uder, they can't kill me, right? Uh, and so Facts. we said, okay, we're picking Uder, we've played it, and we've won with it in scrims, so don't die. Um, we do outscale really hard, so this game is, um, as opposed to the last game, where we were trying to push the advantage, push bot lane, get early kills, this is a little bit different. This is more of a, let's play safe. Let's scale a little bit. Let's not concede too many early dragons and try to, you know, win the mid and late game. That's right. And looks like you guys elected for the, what was it, Grace? If it works for them? It, it, <laughs> it'll work for us. Drafting three of the uh, five picks that the enemy team had in the last game. Though, yep. notably, the Galio is not going mid. The Galio is going support for us. Yep. Yeah, Ex we kind of strong pick that. for our liquid core JJ. Yeah, yeah, no, we we had kind of expected them to think the Galio was going mid, and we you know we used it as a flex pick, and we were like we're gonna take this support, but if they ban a support, and great, right? That Nautilus ban is just a free ban for us, which is awesome. Um, we knew that with the Kaisa and the Galio and the the Udir, the you know Galio being a little bit of an AP source, Udir being a little bit of an AP source, and the Kaisa being a little bit of an AP source, we could go with the strong Yone mid lane. Um, Galio sets it up really well, right? You know they can dive in, and, and if you get a two man knock up with the Galio, your Yone just gets to knock up boatloads of people. So a little bit more Wombo this game, uh, and and definitely focusing on surviving the early game and trying to you know outscale. Yeah, I'd say a really five-hit draft this time. But <laughs> I feel like our early game, game one, was a, a real problem for us. We fell behind. But this game, it looks like we have winning lanes just all around. Yeah, no, I, I what think... What do you think about it? What do you think about the lane priority situation? Here? Yeah, no, I, um, I'm i a little worried about the bot lane, right? Mm -hmm. Galio not super, like, super strong early. Kaisa not super strong early, so yeah, I Yeah, Kaisa with that short range and the ever-daunting Leona EQ combo. Yep. Now, fortunately, 
the Galio can kind of just position between Kaisa mm-hmm. and Leona, and since Leona goes on to the back target, if she lands on Kaisa, Galio just pops his um, his CC, and and because MF's going to be playing behind Leona, you're going to end up getting both of them when the MF walks up. So, you know, we have a little bit of counterplay in that regard. Definitely, we won't. You know, we're not going to just concede the first three dragons and call it a day. But we're gonna. <laughs> we're definitely not going to be trying to force anything early. We're going to be mm-hmm. trying to play slightly safer. Yeah. Uh, as far as mid lane goes, I mean, I, Yone should be able to hang with Silas. It shouldn't be anything too uh, bad. Santo feels good on this champion. I'm excited for him to get to pull this out. So yeah, and we we also really wanted to get um, Scott onto something he could play proactively. You know, we felt a little too reactive with the Shen last game, and so we wanted to get him some priority. And so I think uh, the the Renekton is the perfect thing for that. That was what I was worried about last game because. On, uh, like being on the team, I know that Shannon and Syndra are not the picks for our players specifically. I mean, what was the thought process picking them? Those, like, they just start the game on their back foot. Like, what's the thought process there? Yeah, so we had to blind pick mid lane last game, and Syndra felt like the only blind pickable champion. Was Syndra mm-hmm. Ori were our options, and we felt like Syndra had more damage and more agency. Uh, so we we went with the Syndra blind, uh, and then the Shen was a denial pick, right? They, uh, we, we didn't want them to have it if they wanted to do it, support. Uh, and then it's also good into Renekton, even though it does uh, get uh, pushed around a little bit. So, you know, playing a little bit, we wanted to focus bot lane and focus that Trisana and have the channel to get there and help out. And it just didn't work out quite as well as we'd hoped, and that's all right. Uh, I think this game's going to go better for yeah. us. Because enough about last game, we've got this game to get to. <laughs> Thank you very much, Cotty, for coming on and talking to us about that yep. draft. Let's get into this new game we'll uh, maybe talk to you after we'll see game yeah, three hopefully. see you guys later thank you so much all right game two and already another five point another mirror of kind of what happened last game though having a little bit of the of the dance it's it feels a little bit like deja vu to see the nidalee there in that jungle looking to get that ward up towards the uh, red buff on the red side yeah yeah nidalee is able to do this because she has the range advantage and udir will either start q or r level one so oh, nidalee he getting will aggressive lose this matchup. gets that spear onto winchill 400 don't think he minds too the, much starts with the tiger saves Drops a ward on his red, afraid of invades. So very interesting from Tyler here. He's going phase rush, so it looks like he will be going the AP build. I'm assuming it will be Nashers into Rift Maker. But Chat starting, wants to see the chem tank though, so we'll have to see. The chem tank would be good here against three AP, but Pepperdine only having one AP source. Mm. Might look. Nope, I think he might go for Chem Tank here. Um, but the AP build would be really, really hype. Yeah, we'll have to see whether they prioritize survivability or they prioritize hype. Either way, I'll be happy. <laughs> Tyler has to channel his inner Trick 2G to be able to pull out the dub on this game. Have to see so far. A couple things about Udyr, in fact, he clears extremely fast, he's, let's see, his, he went for Q and R first, of course, which is the fastest clear possible, going two damage abilities, and he will, look at him, he's already on his top side, and Nidalee is struggling on the wolves, and he will be able to contest one, if not two scuttle crabs, because he will win out the 1v1 against Nidalee. Yeah, definitely. That fast clear is something that will definitely give Winchill 400 the advantage here. On his red buff already, he will finish his Krugs before three minutes and will look for a gank or to set up the Scuttle Crab. We see bot side getting pushed in a little bit early, which is what we feared a little bit from the side of Pepperdine, but. Not too damning yet, and generally Scott is very pushed in here in the top side. It's gotta be 
careful going forward though. Lidley is on the bot side, doesn't have to worry too much about a gank at this time. The Nidley does get the bot side scuttle in return for the top side scuttle going over to Pepperdine. Currently, Santa Massey's in a little bit of trouble here. Has to flash the Nidley spear. And Nidley yeah, keeps just... going. And it looks like... Sorry, I missed that, but I was getting my lunch right now. Oh, um, awesome. Yeah. Looks like everything's going all right. Oh, Here's no. It looks like Kaisa's in a little bit of trouble here. But luckily, Liquid Core JJ was able to get the defend up. Though she does what go down spear. to the Nidley Spear. First blood going over to the side of UCB. And, I mean, you could say that could be expected. It's a very unfortunate death, but the bot lane does not have heal, and Andy held on to his exhaust. Oh, several tower shots being tanked by Allura there, but... Oh no, it looks like Liquid Core JJ is in a bit of trouble. And he does go down. That is two kills over to the Nidley for... Cal Blue. And Scott looks like to be losing the trades in topside as well. I mean... Ooh. Now it's just up to the Udir. He needs to. He needs to pull it out. Notable, he does have the CS advantage, but because of those two kills going over to the Nidley, is behind about 500 gold. Santo Massi right. and this Silas in the mid lane have just kind of been having a scrappy lane. Santo Massi falling. A little over 10 CS behind at this point to this Silas. I think the Udyr versus More scrappiness the coming down. It looks like the Silas and is in a bit of trouble and has to flash. And Santo, of course, in that Yon versus Silas wins out on the trade. But I feel like no matter how much gold deficit there is for Udyr, I feel like he should Oh win. no, Santo Massey's in a bit of oh. trouble with the... Silas here in the mid lane, and another kill goes on to Koshin's in Italy. That is a worrying trend, but I have no doubt that Windchill will be able to step it up here. He's got to believe. Oh, the Leona E into the stun going down onto Suyu. They are going down extremely low. Goes down to, I believe, the Q from the Italy. Liquid Core JJ is being chased by Cal Blue, but Windchill 400 is there, but so is the Nidalee. The TP coming down from the side of Cal Blue when Scott gets there. The kill goes over to Winchell 400. And Looks Winchell like Liquid 4JJ is in a bit of trouble. Out a kill. Got stuck in the Mordekaiser ultimate, and ultimately it is two for one, I believe, there in the bot side. And a lot happening all at once. Now it's up to Windchill to see what he can do with that kill because his bot lane is severely behind. That MF Leona combo is just proving to be too strong. And that early Infernal Drake going over to the side of University of California, Berkeley. I mean, like Kyle said, we don't want to give up three early dragons, and I hope this is not a, the start of the same trend, but the bot lane falling early like that is... It, I mean, it just gives up drag control there, so it's just about these next five minutes to see what Pepperdine can do to either regain bot control or try to cut the bleeding. Yeah, definitely. About 2k gold behind here. Important to note, too, here in this top side that the Mordekaiser got a kill there, so he is feeling pretty good against this Renekton right now. 
Especially since he first bought that. Bramble vest. Bramble vest. Uh, just a broken counter to. Oh, he's in a bit of trouble though. Winchell for hum 100 coming out here for the gank. The Mordekaiser does have all, and they should give this over to Tyler here. Oh, they, they give it, it to Scott. Scott. Cohen is here though. Will Winchell 400 be able to get the shutdown onto Cohen here? And like I said, oh, another oh. fight going on here on the bot side. Looks like Suyu will go but down again. is looking to be oh. going down here, and of course the Udir picks it up. Like I said, the gold difference does not matter. The bear um, is just too strong. My goodness, there was a lot happening all over the map there in the bot side. Both Suyu and Liquid Core JJ go down to the Misfortune, giving her three kills at this point in the game. But the Leona does die to a turret shot, but that kill goes over to Liquid Core JJ rather than Suyu. But definitely, I think overall Pepperdine is happy that those kills went where they went, and now there is a 150 gold bounty on the Udir. He has closed that gold difference between the Nidalee and, in fact, surpassed her by coming up on a thousand gold. And we see Tyler has just been power farming. The Udir has great clear, and that has also contributed to the gold lead. And like Connor McGregor said in the chat, Greg McConnor. The Udir will be basically, I mean, I think he's going into the chem tank build and also like Kyle said, he will be unkillable this game. This yeah, misfortune is just- up some mercury treads for the nidly damage. Oh, that was a lovely Leona E. It looks like Suyu oh, might die again to the Q from U Blaster. Liquid Core JJ is in a bad spot. Windchill 400 is here. Looking for the potential re-engage, gets the blue smite onto Mew Blaster, but... He can keep fighting this. Yeah, the Gallia strong. ultimate goes down, but they're going to ultimately okay, fall fine. back. But like I was saying, I feel like this misfortune it does not pose a threat to Winchell at all. It's just a... Un it's not a ticking time bomb, it's just like a sack of gold waiting to be collected here. Yeah, with four kills, a 400 gold bounty. You definitely want that going on to the Udir. And as was predicted by Greg McConnor in the chat, definitely that chem tank, uh, chem tank item going down for Windchill. The turbo chem tank. That's it. Turbo chem tank. Showing that off to the stream. That's right, and... I feel like the stage is set for Winchill to just run over this game. You see a Mach 5 Udyr running at you, there's literally nothing you can do as <laughs> misfortune, I'll tell you that. Definitely. Scott in a little bit of trouble there in the top side, but no, never mind. I did not see Winchill was there. Alcove plays happening. Scott's just got to survive against the Mordekaiser in his ultimate. Finding the Mordekaiser with his passive is unwise, but it goes down and. They just Wincho kill him. gets the kill. Santo lives in the mid lane. That was a brilliant execution. I mean, everything worked out. Dragon is coming up, and it looks like Pepperdine again electing to go for these topside plays. They will get first turret here. At the cost of Mountain Dragon. So it will be a Cloud Soul or a Ocean Soul. And for Pepperdine, they're worshiping. They're probably wishing that this is an ocean, ocean dragon. So we'll have to see. This Drake will go over to the side of University of California, Berkeley, Cal Blue. So we'll see here in just a second. And with the Renekton and Udyr, they're looking pretty unkillable. Once and it you get will be an there. ocean soul. That's very good for Pepperdine. If they can get ocean soul, I mean, that's so much better than Cloud Soul. Um, looks like he's going for Force of Nature. Also, a great buy. He will be zooming in team fights. This misfortune. As an ADC player, I know this misfortune won't stand a chance. Might as well be complaining to his team. Slash FF. <laughs> Stop feeding the Udir. Koshin yeah, a bit see. caught out here. Winter 400, like Tyler you said, pops zooming. The tank, stuns him. 
the Renekton sun comes out and then Nidalee gets away, but... Oh, he was close. zooming! That's terrifying! He was, he was. That's the strength of the deer. Tune into twitch.tv slash trick2g and you'll find out the prowess of the ooh deer. <laughs> Definitely, I'm still waiting for... Chill. Yeah, still waiting for him to collect that bag of gold you said. That is the misfortune sitting yeah. there in the bot lane. I mean, the bot lane just needs to play safe a little bit, and the Udir will carry the game. Udir coming. As we see, he's coming in. He's flashing. Got the stun. The Gale Force does nothing, and the Udir. Oh, the, the kill goes over to the Kaisa. Udyr, oh, they will die to Leona, and she's 100%. Oh, Windchill is tanking, but he will get out and get away. And Wincho is not dying this game. Just beautiful. I mean, he's maxing Phoenix at the bear. He will be absolutely booking it as the misfort as the Kaisa picks up the shutdown and gets herself her own 150 gold shutdown. Yeah, and while we were saying that we wanted the Udir to pick up that bag of gold, it does make sense to a certain extent for it to go over to the Kaisa, get her back into this game a little bit. She's now only a thousand gold behind her misfortune counterpart, so every little bit helps. That's true, and now the tables have turned and Kaisa is now the bag of gold waiting to be collected. I mean she could die easily just by a Mordekaiser ult or another Leona root, but this just comes down to, to skill and mechanics, and hopefully Tyler can pull it out. Clearing like a maniac, unable to be spotted there by the Nidalee. The Nidalee, discovered by the Yone, it seems. We see everyone on the side of Pepperdine playing safe, just waiting for Udyr to come set up a gank. Currently, Tyler is power farming the jungle. Looking to get that force of nature to just run over the game. Gotta fight in mid lane. Oh, wind chill. Coming out. DHC uses the Yone ultimate to get away there. And flashes away. A little fun fact oh. about Yone ultimate, as long as you stand in front of it, and oh! Oh no, so you got aggressive trying to get on the Leona there, and it'll cost both Zuyu and Look at Core JJ, they're live. In a close fight, but we have to look at the mid lane. They're mm -hmm. fighting again, and Mordecai is winning out in the death realm. Santo back, he has TP, and Winchill's going in. He's looking to. Okay, they back off. But there, Tsuyu uses Gale Force, and that might have been a misstep as he gets stunned up by the Leona. And another 150 shutdown back on the Misfortune. Has his collector incredibly strong. It's just, who can carry the Udyr or the Misfortune and... Oh, here's something we haven't talked about yet. Do we see that, uh, uh, quick math, 70 CS advantage there in the mid lane to the Silas? That's I do, crazy. I did not want to point that out. That is, <laughs> that's very, very sad for Santo. Two games in a row that Santo Massi has struggled to CS into his lane opponent. Unfortunate for Santo Massi, but looks like DHC is just a monster with the CS, 10 CS per minute, and when you're just against that caliber of a player, I mean, there's not that much you can do at Windchill. Goes for the solo on the Mordekaiser. Has the help from Galio, Galio but he, he can join. do it himself. Flashes away from the Ooh Deer. As Scott. Oh dear. Get the same treatment. Ooh, but Mew Blaster and game. Leona and the going flash. after Scott. Flashes exchange. As I'd say that's worth for Pepperdine as Leona has to burn her flash and Mordecai has to, has to burn their flash, but... Nidalee trying to take this Drake. It looks like Pepperdine's gonna give it over in favor of getting this Rift Herald, which I'm not sure that's about. A, I mean, that's, that's fine. I mean, as long as they trade objectives and they don't give away this fourth dragon, but it's... Yone in a bit of trouble using his ultimate to get away. Leona looking... Mew Blaster's gonna get the kill. Wow. Seven kills on this misfortune. 
Udyr has his Force of Nature picked up, and oh. Jungle... <laughs> Ty... Oh. Oh, it's the... You, okay, it's Kyle Blue's Jungler that DC'd. Mm-hmm. I was about to say, if Tyler DC'd, that's... <laughs> that'd be very unfortunate. Well, it's unfortunate for anybody. We're, we're fair sports here. So, overall, we do see, like, while this misfortune is a little bit scary, only a 2k gold advantage opened up here for the side of University of California, Berkeley. So, while their misfortune, again, is 7-1-3, and three, overall, they, they don't have that much of an advantage. It's still definitely anybody's game at this point, though... Pepperdine should be feeling the pressure here in about five minutes when that next Ocean Drake comes out because they do not want to give that soul over to Cal Blue. That's true, that's true. But if we look at the gold, Tyler has 300 gold up on Misfortune, so he's straight chilling. 154 farm. Almost the highest in the game if it weren't for DHC with that clean CS. I mean... Man, I have to give props to this mid laner from Cal Blue because he's playing out of his mind. Mm-hmm. Definitely. I dream of those CS numbers. I dream of them, but could never hope to achieve them. But overall, definitely Pepperdine, I think one of their main win conditions will be Windchill 400 being able to get onto Mew Blaster in these fights and make that misfortune. They are ready misfortune. the game. Not That's even true. relevant anymore. Yeah, we'll be starting up here soon. Yeah, and I feel like a little bit nitpicking here, but Tyler or the Udyr needs to buy a Bramble Vest or any type of healing healing reduction item because on the side of UC Berkeley, I mean, Nidalee, Mordekaiser, Silas, it would be, I mean, they just have too much healing on their side. Oh, and Mew Plaster wow. gets another Galio kill. The Nidalee there. Spear into that. I think that was just an auto attack, or was that the Q? That was the Gale Force. Oh, that Gale just Force. Executed. Yeah. And if you're if you're Udyr here, you're balling three, ten, and four. You. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what to say. It's looking rough, but I believe you can pull it out. Oh, Udyr going for this Silas. Zoom in using that chem tank. He doesn't have any healing reduction as a, he just loses out on this yeah. one. He's, oh, but Santa Yone Moxie is here. Here. Scott's there too. Again, no healing reduction. And it does drop and it goes to Santo. Yeah, he needed that gold. He Santo doesn't have his own mythic item yet, but I mean if that fight was, I mean, if that proved anything, is that Pepperdine needs healing reduction and they need it fast. That's something that we've noticed consistently for the side of Pepperdine, that they, you know, tend to not get healing reduction very early in the game, which perhaps is a bit short-sighted. And they don't get it for this dragon. Huh. No ignite on their side either, so... I don't know how they win this next fight. And especially if the side of Cal Blue gets Ocean Soul, they need that healing reduction. As they go on this Mordekaiser again, Udyr should, of course, be able to solo him. As Santos brought to the yeah, death everyone realm, it should be from an Pepperdine easy pickup. Comes over. The boys are here, and that's an easy pickup. Mordekaiser kind of being targeted right now. Must not feel nice. That's leading the his team in deaths next to the Leona. Would you expect a few deaths on the support? It's not necessarily something to scoff at, but definitely the Mordekaiser's not happy about it. That's true. As we see, Tsuyu is needs to be looking for a base suit. Has 1.6, probably would get either a serrated dirk or a pickaxe pick and long swords. As for the rest of the team, no one has enough money to buy healing reduction, and Kaisa goes for the zeal. Not sure if I agree with that buy, but I mean, if he gets 
Runons and Executioners, then he'll be <laughs> applying multiple applications when of that healing reduction. When Chill just casually uh, smites away that scuttle right. crab there in the bot side jungle. He got a Chill minute and a boss. half on this Ocean Soul for UCB or first Drake of the game for Pepperdine. Both teams are trying to get vision control here around this dragon. Oh, UCB accidentally drops two control wards to get that. It looks like the Mordekaiser is caught out here again. And again, he's just pushed up too far with no vision. And Tyler has no problem just off. mowing him down. The John Deere Classic. Multiple applications of that dot on his Q. And this looks like an Ocean Dragon secured for the side of Pepperdine. Perhaps. Miles Still 40 no seconds TP. left. 40 seconds left. There is TP on the Mordekaiser, so he can make it to this fight in time. So, unless UCB decides that they are going to give it up, it is still entirely possible. I doubt it, because Scott can just go up there, and he has TP ready and available. And we see, wow, a dead man's play picked up for um, Tyler, and I He's hope gonna that... He's going to be zooming. And I kind of hope that T2 there, Kaisa could have 1v1 the misfortune, but Kaisa does really well with the isolated Q damage, but chooses to run away. But Udyr here will be... Going He's after going to run down the misfortune. And misfortune's dead here. Good night. Okay. No, it does flash away. I has to burn the I summoner said. spell right before the, the dragon, but if she didn't have that summoner spell... And, this, and the Mordekaiser again. It is in the ultimate Legendary going after Liquid Core JJ, but... Santo lands a beautiful two-man ulti. That was Silas wonderful. Silas the ulti on the Kai'Sa as well. But Udyr and Scar are on the back line <laughs> in there. 2 v 3 and they take down the Misfortune, and the Mordekaiser is down as well. Uh, oh, the Mordekaiser is kind of wreaking a little bit of havoc here. And does get the that kill really... onto both the Udyr and oh, Scott, no. and then the Galio goes down. So this will be an Ocean Soul going over that to the side of. I'm very disappointed. No healing reduction there, and the Rift Maker Mordekaiser with fully stack Conquer just healed all their damage. Yeah, because wow. I had to laugh. It was going well for Pepperdine, but they got caught out, and with no healing reduction, the Mordekaiser was able to completely clean up with a quadra kill to secure the ace there. Pepperdine definitely is going to be feeling the hurt. We see the Bramble Vest now on Scott's Renekton, but it's a little I late. The Ocean little Soul late. is over. I mean, as... I mean, that fight, if it was an indication of anything, is that... Pepperdine are stronger. They just Scott and Windchill can just run over the Misfortune, who blew his flash earlier because she was caught out. And now should be dying in every fight. Galio but a bit caught out it here like from Galio Pepperdine. Galio be dying. And that's his seventh death of the game. Very unfortunate. The Baron is looking to be started up, but... This is very dangerous from the side of UCB. Oh, they're like, they're gonna get- There it. is okay. no vision over on this side from Pepperdine. No one is even nearby, even being able to consider taking this Baron. Okay. I felt like they could have fight that, fought that, but as we see that Udyr finally gets the Oblivion Orb, And they might look to fight the Silas. Pop yeah, is Silas, gonna tank. That is the, the fastest Silas. Udyr I've ever seen in my life. Goodbye, Silas. He's good as dead here, as they're looking to give up the middle inhib turret for this alleviated pressure on the side lane, as Liquid Core JJ dying for the eighth time. As DHC just pulls so much pressure, just stalls out the Udyr and the Yo. And they're gonna get the inhibitor. Seconds. Inhibitor is given away, but that's just extra farm for Zuyu. And I wouldn't. I would be okay with this right now.
as we see, they look, they're looking in the jungle for scraps, but little do they know, Windchill 400 has already farmed it. And 205 CS, third highest in the game. Well done. So now... The Leona and Scott just kind of doing a little dance there in the bot side jungle. Yeah. And it's just a, a waiting game now. Um, Three minutes until the game. Elder Drake. And yeah. Pepperdine wants it. Pepperdine needs it. They are about 6k, a little over 6k down in gold. And while they do have their, their carries online, they definitely don't want the carries on the side of ucb to have that elder drake as you see from ucb three void staffs coming out very smart buys and it's looking like who can kill well, who's backline faster and it looks like it's very close if the misfortune drops i feel like pepperdine wins this a lot of pressure on the spot side turret. Pepperdine might be looking for it, but does give it up. Oh, it looks like the Silas is caught out here, does Zonia's. And he's dead here, he flashes, but... Yeah, Windchill 400 avail. gets it. Oh, it looks like... UCB and is in a, bad of a bit of a bad way, but Liquid Core does caught go out down. here. Dewey goes back and doesn't get the kill. Oh, it got turned around. They are not low enough for Winchell 400 to be able to chase the, down. The Ocean Soul is going to kill them up, and I, I think it's over now. Very unfortunate. Wow, the Misfortune survives with both Presumptor spells, and now it's... Yeah, Suyu went back really, really deep, but didn't really have the resources needed. Windchill 400 is looking for something, but has to flash out to get away, almost dying there by the Nexus Tower. Santo looks like he might die, no. Come on, boys. Yeah, we'll have to see. The other Nexus turret goes down. A beautiful taunt comes out from Liquid Core JJ, but he does go down to the Mordekaiser, who is a monster right now in this game. Koshin takes down Scott, and it doesn't look like Suyu, Santa Masi, or Windchill are going to be able to do much of anything. Yeah, the Mordecai is just a beefy frontline, and Misfortune, the only 80 damage on this for team, pulls it out, and that's a GG. Very well played. Yeah, unfortunately, that's it. That's the game for University of California, Berkeley. And we see Lunch was unable to win the day, unfortunately. So as we leave game and we close this out, we have to say that was amazing play from the side of University of California, Berkeley, or Cal Blue as they're listed on CSL. Great plays, especially from their mid laner DH uh, or DHC 3800. And, you know, just being able to be a monster their entire team yeah i mean at the at the end of the day they just misfortune was a i mean just dealt the damage Mordekaiser was a great front line and their team fight was just better overall what can i say yeah but like we mentioned earlier after that first game definitely uh, an improvement from the previous game. I have to say Pepperdine did make the necessary adjustments and actually look like they had the advantage at certain points in that game. So definitely as we go into VOD review in this next week, we will have more to learn and more to figure out before the WC season starts up next weekend. And we have yet another week to work on team synergy with our new ADC player, Suyu. So I fully expect Pepperdine will continue to improve and have a good showing in that WCC season coming up here shortly starting next weekend on January 30th 3 p.m. Pacific time rather than our normal noon time games so I, I'm eager to see what Pepperdine pulls out in that league so am I and I can't wait all right any closing comments for the stream Cody your first 
casting stream. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it was very exciting, and I had a blast. These games were very fun, and they're very close. And I can't wait what's in store. Can't wait to see what's in store for Pepperdine Esports. Yeah, definitely. It's going to be super exciting, especially going into the WCC. So thank you all for joining us here today. Congratulations to the University of California, Berkeley, Cal Blue, GG, good games. I uh, hope to meet you on the Rift again. And thank you especially to Genius Joe, Joe Heineman from the Pepperdine Esports staff for being around in the chat as our moderator. And of course, thank you all again to everyone who followed this stream and who participated in the chat. We love you dearly, and we will see you on the next one. So until then, follow us at Pep Esports for updates, and bye!